What's up everybody, it's Dr. G. I hope you guys are doing well. So today I am continuing the um, USMLE Step Series for the study materials that you need to study for the USMLE Step 1, Step 2, and Step 3. So the USMLE Step 3, this is the final step of the USMLE exams. Of course we know the three-part exam, Step 1, Step 2. By the time you make it to studying for Step 3, you know, um, you know a whole lot about the USMLE process, the way these exams are created, the way they set these questions, basically the structure and the entire format of that exam. But make no mistake though, there is always that slight variation when it comes to the step three exam because this exam now has the um, clinical cases component, which you did not have in step one and step two. So this is the part where they will present a clinical case scenario to you. It's almost like you're having a step two CS, so the clinical case, but just not in person. You know, you have to, um, they present you with this case and ask you, what do you do? So it's more of a priority kind of situation. It's kind of like you're in an emergency room. So you're triaging patients. Who would I see first? What would I do first for this patient? What is critical? as far as like stabilizing this patient at this moment. So the step three exam has that component to it. It's a two day exam, of course. It has the first day multiple choice. And then the second day, you also have a section of the multiple choice, but also um, a second part of that second day exam is the um, CCS. So basically the clinical cases of that. So all of that, they say the CCS case portion of the exam gives you about 25% of your entire score. So you know this exam is pretty important, right? Because if you bomb the entire CCS cases section, then the chance of you actually passing this exam will be very slim to say the least. So in this video, I will tell you guys the two main resources that I use to study for the USMLE step three. And like I always say for every step of the USMLE guys, less is more when it comes to your resources. Please do not go accumulating every resource you've ever heard about just because you might not even have enough time to cover all of this, okay? Now, the two main resources that I have, and as always, our primary, our gold standard, just like every other step of the USMLE, Emily is the UWorld question bank. There is no getting around that. You definitely need UWorld. Just like you studied for step one and step two with question banks, it's the same way with step three. You definitely need UWorld. You want to get through the entire question bank. There are people that have just finished half of the question bank and then they felt confident enough to go take the exam. But like I always tell you guys, I'm that person that I need to have that sense of completion in order for me to say, okay, I have fully covered my basis. Now I can go take the exam. And also when you finish the question bank in UWorld, be sure to take the associated assessment test, okay? Some people make the mistake of saying, well, I'm doing well with the question banks. I'm just going to go take the exam. And then you bomb this exam. Really do not want to take that risk. UWorld has two sections, just like the actual exam. It has a multiple choice component of it. And then it also has the CCS cases as well. So you want to get through all of that before you go take this exam. And if you have time on your hands, by all means, just get through the question bank. And again, just, you know, you finish it up, you rinse, you repeat. And if you don't have time to get through the entire question bank twice, then just go through your incorrect questions. You know, making sure that you have mastered like your areas of weakness. That's really really the main thing there. Uh, my second resource as far as studying is the ccscases.com. So the ccscases.com is a completely separate website. If you just type that in on Google ccscases.com, a lot of people use that as a supplement to study for the CCS portion, um, which is basically the clinical case scenario um, portion of the exam. So CCS cases, they have over a hundred plus cases where you can basically get more practice in and get used to like the diagnoses or the treatment plan, you know, therapies and how to basically triage those patients depending on uh, what clinical setting that they present. And it's really good practice. I did that as well. I will say though, I didn't get through the entire question and quite frankly, I only got through 10 cases on the CCS cases because I was on a busy rotation when I was studying for step three. Um, I did mine during residency. So you can imagine it takes a whole lot 
lot to study for step three while you're in residency. And of course, it's not easy trying to carve out, you know, a dedicated study time while you're in residency, especially when you're an intern year, because intern year is when you expect it to hit the ground running. You know, they want you to get busy, especially with inpatient rotations. You don't have enough time to really do anything else, especially studying. And quite frankly, the rest of everybody else on your team, they really don't care that you're studying for step three because they want you to show up and be there when you're supposed to be there, work as a team and no one really cares about your step three, but of course it will matter when the program director starts asking you about that score and say, Hey, have you taken the exam? We need your score report, that kind of stuff. So keep that in mind. And speaking of studying in residency, guys, let me tell you this. If you have the opportunity to take step three before starting residency, Oh, for the love of God, I'm telling you, do that. It will pay off in loads. I'm telling you, because like I said earlier, when you're an intern year, you expect it to hit that ground run. Now, if you've already taken step three before you came in to residency, it will be an easy process, right? Cause you can actually focus on learning what you're supposed to be learning the intern year, as opposed to having that stress looming over your shoulder, you know, thinking, man, I need to get this exam out the way so I can just kind of have my peace of mind. Most programs will allow you up to like second year. Um, I know my program, they did tell us like by February, January, February, um, they wanted of that same year that you started residency, they expected you to have at least attempted the exam. Everyone will tell you when it comes to step three exam, you don't have to worry about shooting for crazy high scores, you know. Most important thing is to just pass the exam. The other thing to also keep in mind too, if you're someone that's thinking about going into fellowship later on, of course you wanna do better on your step three score. I've heard um, most of the resources that I've looked at, they say a decent step three score when it comes to like trying to get into fellowship or whatnot, it's like in the 220s and above. So that might be a score that you're looking at. But if fellowship, it's not in your plan or anything of that sort, then just passing the exam is just good enough, okay? So again, if you can take the exam before coming in, please do that. So one last question I also like to add just because it relates to step three is, quite a few people have always asked on um, what happens if you fail step three? You know, do you get kicked out of residency if you're already in residency? And guys, believe it or not, it does happen, okay? It really does happen. When you fail step three the first time, the program will give you an opportunity to retake the exam. Some programs have different rules or policies as far as like how many attempts they will allow you take, but um, some have just two attempts and some will have three. And then after that, that's it, you're done. They will basically dismiss you from the program. I am not making this up. This is something that has happened even in our own program. There is a history of that. So make no mistake by thinking because you're already in residency, step three doesn't matter. It is still an important exam. If not for anything, the fact that you needed to complete the steps of the USMLE, right? You also need that um, to kind of boost your application if you're considering fellowship. And of course you need that to stay in the residency so you can finish. If you look at it from that perspective, you can see this exam is still important, but I will say the stress level though associated with this exam as compared to the other step of the USMLE and like step one, step two is so much lower because you already know I'm in residency, right? Of course, push come to shove. They'll probably just give me another chance to retake this exam. But anyway, guys, keep that in mind. It's still an important exam for the various reasons that I've just mentioned earlier. So just to reiterate the two main resources that you need for these exam, First is UWorld and then the second one is ccscases.com. And speaking of CCS cases, the USMLE also have their sample CCS cases as well. I think there are about five to six cases that you can practice with. Oh my goodness. I cannot emphasize this enough, how important it is to practice with the sample um, CCS cases that the USMLE has posted on their website. It will help you a lot. If not for anything, it'll really help you learn how to navigate that process. So the software where you have the CCS cases is not something that we were exposed to when studying for the previous USMLE exams, you know? It's something completely new. So practicing with the sample CCS cases online um, from the USMLE website will really kind of show you how to use that, how to start out your management, how to do this triage, how, what therapy, like who needs treatment, first of all. 
they basically walk you through the cases. They also give you rationale at the end of it, like after you select your answers or pick whatever choices you think is the correct one, they give you rationale after that. I did it like multiple times just to kind of get a rhythm and a flow of how this process works that way. Because it's one thing to know the material and then to get there on the day of the exam and you haven't even practiced with that software to really know how it works. You'll probably feel completely defeated because you spent so much time trying to learn the software for the first time time so please don't let that be you practice before you get to that exam okay anyway, guys that's it for now I'm gonna go ahead and stop here if you have any question please go ahead and send me your question to messages on any of my social media handles until next time y'all take care stop